Hello everyone, I'm Jillian. I'm really happy to be answering your questions about my job as a marine ecologist. I work for the University of Malaya. I am a marine scientist at the Department of Geography. And I have three main duties here. I teach students in the Geography program and the Environmental Studies program. Every day I spend around three to four hours giving lectures and tutorials, talking to students and guiding them in my research projects. This takes up roughly around 40% of my time. Um, the second thing I do is I do research on my pet subjects, which would be about the marine environment and in particular the seagrass ecosystem. So this involves traveling to different islands and coastal areas around Malaysia to do research. For instance, our team is currently trying to find out the best way of restoring damaged coral reefs. We are also trying to find out about dugongs or sea cows and seagrass, where their favorite feeding areas in Malaysia may be. And in another project, we are trying to predict how things are going to change in the oceans with climate change. So all these research projects take up another 40% of my time. And the rest of my time, is spent doing outreach work. For instance, giving public talks about my work in marine science and providing advice to government agencies and to non-governmental organizations about marine conservation. I guess you could say I got started in my field by first falling in love with the ocean. And this happened when I learned how to snorkel for the first time. 20 years ago actually. You know, the minute I saw with my own eyes what the underwater world looked like, that was it. I was hooked. And then what got me even more interested later on to study seagrass was when I visited seagrass meadows around Malaysia and saw how these remarkable plants were providing services to us without us even realizing it, such as clean water, a place for baby fish and squid and crabs to take shelter in, feeding areas for so many marine creatures. But the thing is, seagrass was getting very little attention. People looked upon seagrass as just grass and they didn't really care that seagrass was being destroyed very rapidly by pollution and land development. So I decided I was going to study seagrass for my PhD at university. I thought that if I could learn how to study seagrass properly, and to show evidence for how important these plants are to us, then people might just sit up and take notice of them. So after I finished my PhD in Australia, I came back to the University of Malaya, where I have been trying to do as much as I can to raise awareness about the marine environment in general, but seagrass in particular. Well, because I work in a university, so I needed to get a university degree right up to the PhD level. I started with a bachelor's degree in environmental studies from the University of Malaya, and then I went on to do my master's in environmental management, also at the University of Malaya, and finally I got my PhD from the University of Western Australia in seagrass biogeography. In terms of skill sets, um, I need to be comfortable in the water. So I need swimming skills, I need to know how to snorkel, and I also need to have a scuba diving license. And I also need to be physically fit so that I can keep my students safe when we are working out at sea. Um, and finally, because I also teach a lot, I need to be skilled in storytelling because I don't want to be a boring teacher, you know. I. I need to get my students curious about the ocean and I do this by telling stories. Well, I've wanted to be many things in the past. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a Catholic nun because I was educated in a convent school and I truly admired the Catholic nuns I came into contact with there. I think there was something about their calmness and sense of purpose that I was drawn to. But then I changed my mind later, you know. Later on, I wanted to be a piano teacher because I enjoy music very much. And, I've, and I had been going for piano classes ever since I was a kid. 
And then I changed my mind again. I wanted to be a veterinarian because I love animals. And later on, when I was a teenager, I decided I wanted to do law. I wanted to be a lawyer. But it was only when I was in university where I was given the chance to see what it was like to be a researcher in marine science, uh, to be a scientist actually in, in university, um, that I decided that this was what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a scientist in the university because I knew that my personality was suited for it. I like doing research because I like the excitement of finding out new things about the world. I also really like teaching students and helping them discover new things. So my path towards my current job wasn't a direct route. I tried many different things. I imagined myself in many different types of jobs. I've talked to many people about their career choices, uh, but I'm really glad that it's brought me to where I am today at the University of Malaya. Well, in my job, I travel a lot. Um, and I travel a lot because I need to take students out to islands and coastal areas to work on marine science stuff. And also because um, as a research scientist, I need to travel to conferences, I need to attend meetings in other countries, um, I need to engage and work with other scientists from other countries. Before the pandemic, I used to be going out to the field at least once a month, you know, one month. Uh, I could be in Tioman Island, another month I would be in the Johor Islands, and another month I'd have to be in Europe for a training workshop. So there's a lot of travelling involved. So because of this, um, my lifestyle can be very rushed, but also very exciting. But there's another element to it. Because I teach subjects about the environment, I also lead a life where I try to cut down on my environmental impacts. So this means living a simple life, such as reducing the amount of plastic waste I produce, living in a smaller house rather than a larger house, choosing a car that uses less petrol, making sure to buy local products from people I know. So these small little lifestyle things that have come about just because I've chosen um, as a career uh, you know, something that's connected to the environment and marine science. Well, the thing I enjoy most is I get to be with university students and I really, really enjoy watching them discover themselves as they grow, you know, and become more con confident throughout the three to four years that they spend with me. I think that educating the next generation is the best way that I can serve. Um, in terms of what's difficult about my job, I think it's public speaking. Uh, I have to give presentations, meet people, I have to lobby for funding, I have to talk to the press, to reporters, I have to network with policy makers. That's difficult because I'm more the the type of person who likes doing work behind the scenes, not at the front line. Um, I don't really like being in front of a camera, like now. <laughs> I don't really like attention. And I've been like that ever since I was a child. But having said that, I think I've become quite good at all these things that I don't like doing because I know I just have to go out there and do it. If, if I don't put myself out there to talk about my work and my students' work, then people won't support the research that we do. People won't support easy for me. But if, you, if you ask me what's the thing that I, uh, what's the thing that's difficult about it, I would say public speaking. Well, if you want to work as a marine scientist at a university, know that you will have to have a university degree starting with a bachelor's degree, then a master's degree, and then a PhD degree. And in the Malaysian system, it can take you 10 to 12 years to get from your first university degree to a PhD degree. So you need to have the patience for it. But um, the journey, although it seems like a long one, it's well worth it. Um, but you'll have to be aware that it's a journey that you have to take, you know, many, many years that you have to sp spend building up your skill sets before 
become a scientist in a university, but it's really well worth the effort. One other thing, the things are changing very fast in science right now. The scientists of the future will not just have to be in a lab or run experiments or memorize chemical names or do maths. Instead, the scientists of the future will need good communication skills, public speaking skills, networking skills. And these skills are becoming as important as your basic science skills. So my advice to you would be, don't just study your science now and ace your science exams. Instead, make sure you also do other things outside science. You know, read poetry, write stories, read fiction, play music, do art, dance, be an actor on stage, be all that. Because in the future, you will find that it, it is often your hobbies that will help you think about science in a different way in a better way even. And it will be your hobbies that will make you a much more creative and interesting scientist. Thanks everyone.